Hello! Stephanie, it worked out. The intro quilt, it's there. <laughs> it worked out. Hey everybody, hi! Mmm, it's, it's Tuesday night. It's Tuesday night and you're there, you're not up there. You're right there and I'm here and I'm really glad to be here. It's quilt nerd. It's quilt nerd time. And uh, I got it, I'm, a, I'm a few minutes late, so if you're new to this show and I wanna welcome anybody who's watching on YouTube, we're starting to do the multi-stream thing. Um, we're all so new at this. I went a little crazy with the blush. Um, we're, you know, it's still new, this whole multi-streaming thing. And, and uh, a friend of mine the other day, he was like, I was telling him, I was like, I'm really proud of myself, you know? It's been like a year of trying to learn new things, like tech things that are really hard to learn and I'm just so new at it and, and people who watch the show, you know, a lot of them are new to live streaming and Twitch is new for a lot of people. And he was like, you should definitely have an intern who's like on site with you doing all that tech. You know, like, like he was like, get someone from like DePaul or Loyola, you know, some, and I was like, it's a great idea. First of all, but but no, I think it was it's better that I've been learning new things all year. But anyway, my point is is that um, 
If you're watching on YouTube uh, tonight, that's great. I'm really glad. And we're also doing the Facebook thing. So that's exciting too. All these little changes that come along in the show are always, I don't know, they feel like a pretty big deal. <laughs> um, and so we're growing an amazing community here. It's really true. We have subscribers. I'll talk about subscriptions later and why you should subscribe to the show. Um, and if you like it, if you don't like it, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you to, if you don't like it, it's okay. You know, you, there's a lot of content out there that, um, that needs your support. But, uh, but if you watch Quilt Nerd and, and you're like I, like, I like what she's doing. And you know, I have a Hulu subscription, but I never watch Hulu. I, I don't even like Hulu. I'm gonna cancel Hulu. And I'm gonna subscribe to Quilt Nerd because I watch every week. Um, so anyway, welcome if you're watching on those platforms because it's an exciting thing to even be able to do that. So, um, Quilt Nerd is a show about quilts. It's not uh, about how to how to make them. Uh, there's beautiful content out there for you to learn how to make quilts of all kinds. Uh, we're actually going to look today uh, at a at a old some old footage from Georgia Bone Steel. Mm. Yes, yes, lap quilting with Georgia Bone Steel. We're gonna look at footage from uh, one of her shows back, back in the day. Back in the day, oh my God, she was a fox. She was a stone fox. So, um, so we're gonna look at that and we're gonna look at, you know, the culture of quilts and the history of quilts. In fact, the quilt behind me um, uh, is a, uh, a quilt made of, at least the back for, for sure is made from uh, sacking material, you know? And so we have traditional quilts on the show and we have, there's an art quilter we're gonna look at tonight. Oh my God. And I have footage, I have a two minute video uh, of her in her studio. And, and she's a contemporary art quilt maker. So, so we look at all this stuff, you know? And live streaming is a different, uh, it's a different format, you know? For, for, it's a new format for a lot of people. And for this show in particular, it's the only way, you know? It's the only way because it's like a podcast. We have the podcast vibe, you know? Uh, there's a host and there's content and it's weekly. We actually do two shows a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays, and we have a morning show every other Friday starting this week at 9 a.m. Central because we have a lot of friends overseas. But, um, but we, um, we go as long as we want. And it's a chatty thing, you know? I did PBS for a, a number of years. I mean, like five years or something. I was making shows for public television and I was also doing shows, you know, Quilty on the internet. And Quilty, I forget how long the episodes were, but they were specific, you know, the time, time frame that we did those shows in because you have to have some sort of structure. We don't, we don't have that here. We don't have to do that here. So it's chatty, it's casual. I work very, very hard to get great content for you. And I am pretty organized tonight. Today was a very strange day. The air conditioning doesn't work in my office. And there are a lot of windows in that office. And so I was sweating in the dark. Yeah, because I had to turn off all the lights to try to make it cooler. So, so I mean, look, look at it. And, and Steph, I'm gonna introduce you to Steph in just a second. Look, look at these materials. So we're A Books affiliates around here. But look at all the, look at all these books. These are the books. The green screen doesn't like that. These are the books, the resources from which I pulled content for you tonight. And usually it's like locked and loaded, but I might have to shuffle through some books tonight to get to what I want to get to. But it's fabulous stuff. And the one, the last thing I'll say uh, about the show is that um, we're constantly changing things, adapting to what the viewers are feeling, adapting to what you know makes what's fun for me, right? Because it's gotta, it's gotta be fun for me, or I, you know, it's not gonna be fun for anybody else. The good news is that I could look at this stuff all day. And I do. Quilts are art, they are culture, and they're beauty, and they're history, and I mean, you can see the whole world if you just start with one quilt, and I believe that, and I know that, and we know that, um, the quilt nerd people out there. So, um, yeah, so the, 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 the thing I say is that this isn't a presentation, it's an exploration. So I pull this stuff together, and I learn along with you, and we just like, we just look at stuff. And so the podcast thing is great, and we have the luxury of visuals as well. So <clears throat> I hope you'll stick around, you know, get some wine. I've got some wine. I like to have some chips. And I gotta have my cake. I gotta have Stephanie cake. Eee! Can you, can you see her if I hold this up? Look, there she is, there you are. How, come, how have I never done this before? See, you're, you're my third monitor. She's my on my third monitor. Stephanie cake, 
thank you so much for helping with the show. You are the on-air producer of this show, and I appreciate you. How, how was your day? It was very good. It's always better after eight my time on Tuesdays, <sighs> if you get my drift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am feeling it. I'm feeling it. And for those of you that don't know, I am on the East Coast of the United States. Yes, she is on the East Coast of the United States. So it's not like it's not like she's in Chicago and she's like, I like it when Quilt Nerd's about an hour in. Then my day gets better. <laughs> but um, Stephanie Cake is the cake because she's been a nerd for a long time and her screen name was is Stephanie Cake. And so I'm just so grateful for you. Thank you so much for everything you do. Even the moral support. But like, the just... I mean, everything, everything. Thank you. Thank you. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> and tonight, Stephanie Cake has a very special role. Uh, and one of her roles in particular is to draw for the giveaway. And we have a giveaway tonight. We're, we're drawing for the for the book. And at, at the break, I'm going to run get the book because <laughs> I forgot to grab it in my big pile of books. But it's a historic Australian quilt by Annette Jarrow. We're going to give that book away to a reader. And it's just, that's what we do around here. So. Um, so I got to say hi to a few people. I, you know, I, I, the intro has been a little bit long and I was just a couple minutes late. By the way, the show begins, you know, at the hour, but then I give some minutes for people to get notifications, to come in, you know, notifications, they don't even always work. So I start about 10 minutes after the hour. Tonight I was a little late. Um, I see friends. I see so many great people. Hey, Lady K Quilts. First time chat from Lady K Quilts. Lady K Quilts, you know what I got to do for you? I got to do a little champagne pop. Hey, um, I'm really glad you're here. Really glad, Lady K Quilts. That's that's kind of a. I have a soundboard and I am not afraid to use it. Uh, and for anybody who's watching on the replay, replay crew, it's for you. Um, it's okay is here. Ivy Cadivy and Robin's Nest, Word and Bird Nerd, and IWC Quilts. It's so good to see you. It's been a minute. Um, I love it when you're here. And Myra's here. Um, D. Marie, yeah, the sound went out for a hot second, but it, it came back. It came back. It was like the music was weird. D. Marie, it's great to see you. Uh, Fiendor coming in with that. You had the music. Fiendor had the theme music when it wasn't here for real, and I appreciate it. Padma is here. Oh, man. Everybody's here. M. Sue John. J. Comb Jellies. Yay. Hello from California. It's great to see you, too. Uh, My Great Cats. Wonderful. Um, yeah, Fiendor is like, there was no sound for a minute. Maybe it's those, like the old days when Mary forgot to turn on her microphone and we had to tell her. Did I just see, um, that will still happen. But see, now with Stephanie here, it's not going to happen as much. The cake is on the case. Dee Dee Brew Crew, Kitty Hannah. Pen Burrito! Um, Mother Nature, oh my god, the, the gang's all here. I'm so happy to see you. I, 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 you know I love to say hi to everybody. And my mother says, Mary. You can't say hi to everybody. You gotta, you gotta get on with things. I'm like, yeah, she's not wrong. But uh, Saucy Stitcher and everybody, you know, I appreciate you a lot. And by the way, anybody who's new, oh yeah, yeah. One last thing, the 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 YouTube Facebook chat is open. Facebook is really new for us, so the Facebook chat room is functional. <laughs> like you can chat uh, in there. Um, I I can't see it though yet. Um, I told you it's really new. The YouTube uh, channel, there, the chat isn't turned on. And, and, and the reason I talk about this at all is we're multi-streaming to these platforms, but the party is really on Twitch. And I won't talk about why I prefer this platform and why I started the channel on this platform, or started the show, but we have memberships, we have perks to be entered into the giveaways for the book and everything. You, you come here, right, and you do your, um, your membership and your chatting here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash quilt nerd show and that's not because we have like some you know financial like strategy we just don't know how to do it any other way I, I don't know one day you know we'll have some subscription maven who's like you know managing a team of 10 people you know to work on the multi-platform memberships but for right now we just got to do it over here so i really hope you'll come over here and chat with us and subscribe so today I was talking with Ms. Molly Squared, probably maybe in the chat, I don't know, 
Uh, and if you're new, by the way, you get a lot of welcome baskets in the chat and you get lots of love, so you should come over here for sure. So I was talking to Molly Squared, who's a nerd, and uh, months ago we said uh, we wanted to do a research project together. And the whole thing developed on this show. Hang on, I gotta get small, because I want you to see the quilt. Help, help, I'm small. Um, let me get that doc out of there. Okay, so um, months ago, yeah, we, we decided that we wanted to do uh, a research project together. And uh, so we're doing that, and a lot of you know about that, and, and we're gonna present uh, a little piece of it at AQSG seminar uh, a month from like today. A month from today, it's the end of September in San Diego. About the nerdiest thing you can do at this time uh, for, for quilt study stuff, American Quilt Study Group. So we're gonna do that. And so I talked to her today because we had to fill out some very official things. And I said to her, I was like, I gotta get an intro quilt. And I was like, Molly, what am I gonna do? Because we start the show with a quilt, one quilt every time. And she was like, everybody loves a feed sack. <laughs> and I was like, this is why I love Molly, right? So I was like, you know what, it's true. And I love a feed sack as well. And so I wanted to get a really good feed sack quilt for you all. One book I didn't tell you about, Stephanie, because I don't actually have it here, but it's Lindsay McRae's feed sack quilt book. You probably have it. Most people have Lindsay McRae's feed sack quilt book because it's amazing. It's really good. For some reason that I, I know not why, I don't have that book on my shelf. I could use it. So, no, 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 don't send me a feed sack quilt book from Lindsay McCray, because if you do it and then like three other people do it, well, then we'd have some more giveaway material, but don't do it, I don't have room. Um, anyway, so I need to get Lindsay's book. I, I mean, my mom is friends with her and it's such a wonderful book and I've looked at it, but I don't have it. And I really want to do a big feed sack like segment. I want to talk about feed sacks. I mean, there's so much to talk about in terms of quilt history and quilt culture, even feed sacks you know, this show will be on for a really long time because there's so much to say about quilts. And I mean, there could be a segment on feed sacks, there could be a segment on sugar sack quilts, flower sacks, you know. These different sacks have been used for a long time and, and, and the reason why they were used is fascinating. Uh, you know, it's a make-do kind of thing for a lot of people. And anyway, a lot of them were made in the 1940s. Yes, in the 1930s, but anyway. So the intro quilt, we don't, you know, spend a whole lot of time on. That's what I mean when I say we'll do a whole thing on feed sack quilts at some point. But, um, but because I didn't have Lindsay McRae's book, I just didn't want to go there with feed sack quilts yet. But I wanted to honor my friend Molly, who really helped me out with that official business we had to do today. So I went over to my bookshelf and I said, shelf, show me, show me what I need, and, and lo and behold, it did. So I plucked, I plucked this wonderful book by Questa Benberry, the late and great Questa Benberry from my shelf, A Piece of My Soul, Quilts by Black Arkansans. And I have had this book, I, 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 it, was in, it was in my house, and so I didn't have it in my, in my office, and so for a while, it was just in my house, and I was like, I know I have that book. So the other day I was like, ah, there it is. And so I haven't, I haven't spent time with it yet because it was in my house instead of my office. Anyway, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. I mean, I mean, it's really, really, really good. Um, ugh, the pictures are, they just, they can't be beat. It doesn't get better than this. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So this book was written in, and this quilt comes from this, from this book, okay. I think that's probably evident. But, uh, oof, this was uh, written in 2000. It was published in 2000. Quest of Benberry, you know, this is, this is a question for Word and Bird Nerd. She likes answering questions like this. When did Quest, Quest of Benberry pass away? Because, I, I, I mean, obviously, if she published this in 2006, or 2000, then, you know, it was after that. But anyway, she, her, her, the woman who wrote this book was a great quilt scholar, and her obituary was in the New York Times. Yeah, that's how big of a deal she was in the world of quilt scholarship and just like awesomeness. So anyway, so this this quilt, um, hang on now, hang on. Oh, everything's gonna fall apart. I had to move all of my stuff, my gear, my, my whole 
kit into the conference room stuff. It was too hot in my office. I couldn't do the show. I couldn't do the show in there. No way. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Croker Sacks, page 19. I'll show you some more of this quilt in just a second here. Um, 2007. There it is. Um, oh, yeah, Padma, you know about that quilt. Oh, man. Okay, so page 19. This quilt, <clears throat> I can tell you about it here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Francis Smith Wilson and Melvin Wilson married circa 1900. Um, these two people, so, so yeah, Francis Smith was born, the woman who made this quilt, okay? The woman who made this quilt was born in the late 1800s and died in 1948. They were both from Kansas. Um, who Francis married Melvin Wilson at age 13. Whoa, and 11 children were born to the couple. Uh, the Wilson family near, lived here. Mm -hmm. Okay, all Francis's children were taught to sew. Four of her daughters became excellent quilt makers. I'll zoom out all the way. You know, it's interesting. The pictures in this book are so good that when I saw this particular picture, I thought, oh no, it's not as clear of a picture. No, I, that's, that's just use, right? That you see down at the bottom. That's, that's not a, a, a like poor lighting as far as I can tell. I mean, I think that is like, that's use, right? Don't you think cake? Yeah. Yeah. She's going, yeah. 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 That looks, yeah. That looks like a, a well-used and loved quilt. Yep. It looks in, you know, I was, and, and on both sides, let me turn it around. Um, the other, the other side is also really, um, worn and really, um, soiled, right? It's so, and I think about the pictures that I've seen and I was just reading too about how, oh, we saw it on the show the other night with that, the, the book, um, that showed the young man who, who hung his, uh, it was West Virginia, right? The guy who loved like deer like shooting them and <laughs> hanging them on his wall taxidermied um but he had quilts over his door and a lot and a lot of people i mean in the dust bowl people would hang quilts over their doors instead of doors because they didn't have doors yeah, I mean, right right yeah and they did in, in the Appalach you know a lot of the appalachian regions too they That's right. used them as wall coverings mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm, mm. we were reading that book about texas quilters and i remember how i mean they didn't have doors on their homes they did i mean everything they had to, to get was brought in from miles away and they built a log cabin or a sod house or something they weren't like let's hang a door now it wasn't like that right and so quilts were door were they covered the opening to the home you know so maybe this was hanging on the ground well we don't know we don't know but um but but it, either way it's a wonderful picture of a really really well used quilt okay um, okay, so da -da -da. a surviving quilt of Francis Wilson's. Let me get the border kind of, the chat covers the screen a little bit, but we like that because the replay folks can see the chat if we do this this way. A surviving quilt of Francis Wilson is her Star of Lemoyne quilt, okay? Pieced during the mid 1930s. Okay, so 1930s, it's not as old as I thought. And I guess we can tell from the fabrics, it's, yeah, it's not from 1882, okay. Francis called the pattern Lemon Star, a common corruption for the name Lemoyne, L-E-M-O-Y-N-E, Lemoyne, a common corruption for the name Lemoyne of Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne, Sieur de Bienville, the founder of New Orleans in 1718. This quilt, so, so this quilt is listed as Lemon Star, but the sort of classic name for this particular pattern is Lemoyne Star, right? This quilt contains scraps so tiny that some of the points of the stars themselves were pieced. What? This is what I mean by, by a, this is an exploration, not a presentation. I didn't know that. Really? So, wait a minute. This quilt contains scraps so tiny that some of the points of the stars themselves were pieced. I scanned this at like 600 DPI. This is the best I can do. But basically, Cuesta is telling us that the tips, the tips of the stars. Onto the pieced border, a once red but now faded and worn binding was attached. Let's look at the binding. What does the binding look like? Oh, there it is. The star of Lemoyne quilt was tacked with red and yarn, oh, red and orange yarn ties. The back 
is sacking material. <laughs> I told you, I told you I was gonna get there. Um, the back is sacking material. I don't have a picture of the back. Uh, pieced to make it larger. So she 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 sewed sacks, you know, to, to make it bigger. Sacking is called crocker sacks in a number of rural southern communities. I'm gonna put that in the chat. Hang on. Hey El Riggs, it's so good to see you. I'm so glad to see you. Those little emotes, those little pictures and things people are using in the chat, they're really fun. L Riggs is a tier two subscriber, so she gets access to the um, the scone. We got little scone. He's our little red panda, uh, our little red panda mascot. Um, here, okay. So it, so Questa is saying Crocker sacks, and that's a new one for me. I've heard sugar sacks, I've heard flower sacks, you know, all that, but Crocker sacks. Um, yeah, and that and that's what I've got for you. I mean, that's that's what it is. But but this this book, uh, Peace of My Soul, Quilts by Black Arkansas, oh, it's really good. So if you want a copy of it, and most of the the books we look at on this show or the the things that I pull from are totally out of print, you know. So you should get them uh, used, usually very cheaply, inexpensively on Abe Books, and we're an affiliate. So look, you know, Steph, we talk about how. We don't make a lot from the from the from the A Books affiliate links, but what if thirty thousand people bought the book? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What if, what if like what if like twenty five people bought a piece of my soul by Black Arkansans using our affiliate link? I mean, it could be like it could be like, and I'm not I'm not kidding. It could be like five dollars. Yeah, Th- yeah. Believe and me, that buys some internet for this show to be yeah. streamed. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Oh Lord, everything is so much money. Um, I think I've got an issue with my, do I have an issue with my green? Yeah, I surely do. Okay. Um, all right. So let's, let's talk about stuff. Let's talk about things, stuff and things. Uh, Linda is here. Hello. I want to say hi to everybody. Quilting Nancy. Hi, Mademoiselle Larry. My French is impeccable. Oh, ooh, la la. What did I hear? Oh, I heard a Lady Gaga song where she actually, she sings ooh la la. Okay. Oh, have I got a treat for you tonight. So, uh, this quilt, you guys, this quilt led me down the path that we're going tonight. I was scanning things in for a project, quilt nerd related, of course. And, um, and I was looking for, I really love Schiffer Publishing, right? Schiffer is a great, so you can't see that. Schiffer Publishing is, is great. Quilt folk, we work a lot with Schiffer Publishing. So, um, so I was looking through some Schiffer books and I came across in the Southern, this is gonna look really crazy on that green screen, Southern Quilts, right? Um, Mary Kerr wrote this book, Southern Quilts. It's relatively new, which is exciting because one of the things that's really changed between, or the things that's different between like the bicentennial era of quilt culture and today's quilt culture is that there are very, very few books like this, right? Southern Quilts, I mean, I think of the great Mary Kay Waldvogel, you know, Betts Ramsey, you know, Jonathan Holstein, and all, all our writers and our bookmakers. Um, Costa Benberry, right? And, and, and the internet has done some of this, but I mean, there, we need more books, right? So if you, have, if you wanna write a quilt book that's like a quilt history book, you should definitely do that. Talk to me, I will help you, I will help you. I know people, I do, I know people. I know people. Um, I made it. No, no, that's the wrong thing. That's my new sound. That sounds like I'm kidding. No, I really do know people. If you want to write a book about quilt history, I don't know. Just, I mean, at least tell me about it and I can try to help you out. Okay, because we need more quilt books. So, so I'm looking through this book and I see this quilt, okay? This quilt. And I actually went, <gasps> I did. I went like, <gasps> oh my God. Because sometimes you just, you just, you just go, oh my God. It's good. <laughs> oh God. I used to do that for, I mean, like 11 months or no, 10 months I did this all by myself. But now when I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful, I can look over at Stephanie on my phone and she's going, yeah, yeah. And you are, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's really great. And okay, so it's great in like nine million ways. And then I just saw right now with you, do you see that heart in the quilting? I didn't see it before, yeah. I didn't see it before. There it is. Let's see. Let me find another one. There's a heart. There's a heart in the quilting. You see, it's upside down there. I'm, I mean, I just can't. 
it's so good. And and it's it's the colors, you know, we like to analyze quilts on this show. You know, sometimes we get really like, how did she make that block, you know, or how did that come together? This one is pretty simple. I mean, it's a pretty obvious, you know, block repeat. Oh, here's here's one where you can see the, the heart really well. Um, but you know, how did how did she presumably is she how did she know just what orange, you know, to pick? It's just it's just amazing. So um, so I found this quilt and I was like, well this is gonna be the intro quilt, but then I had another idea. So this quilt, uh, it's a cotton bowl quilt. B-O-L-L, -L, cotton bowl. Um, Quilty Nancy is like, yes, it's a beautiful quilt, totally. Oh wait, you were saying that about the other quilt, Quilty Nancy, but you're right. Um, son got a bingo, what did I do? Ivana, did I say it's a crack up? Um, <laughs> hey, look at that, Hope Quilts. Hope Quilts, welcome to the show. Little champagne cork for you. I'm so glad you're here. It is great. We love people when they come to the show and then they say hi. And you never have to chat. You don't ever have to chat to enjoy the show or to be a subscriber. But it's awesome when you say hello. Even if you say hello and then you're like, I said hello, goodbye, I'm just gonna watch now and sew, or I'm just gonna watch and draw, or I'm gonna watch and you know do laundry or whatever. Okay, so, so the cotton ball quilt is, um, and Hope loves the quilt, I mean, She's, she's good, she's good. She knows good quality when she sees it. And Richard is here, hello, in Little Bird Stitch. Um, circa 1920, that's something else I love about this quilt, you know? I would say the decades that I see quilts, you know, credited in the caption and the information about the quilts that I look at, 1920 does not come up all the time. It doesn't come up all the time, you know? It's pretty close to 1918, but. Uh, it's 72 by 73 inches, and that was kind of surprising to me because this thing, I thought it would be a 90, 90 incher, right? 90 by 100 or something. But it, it's 70 by 70, basically. Uh, I love the zigzag quilting in the strip pieced border. Isn't that good? And I mean, and look at that. Look at the way that the center of the quilt, this green section. I mean, let's do, actually, let's do analyze this, right? They don't call us quilt nerds for nothing. So. Let's just, look at all those welcome baskets. Hey, Shauna. The welcome baskets are for you, Hope, and for um, our friend, our friend who was here earlier. Lady K. I know she had Lady in her name. I like that. Okay, so, so, so let's talk about this. So it's, obviously it's applique. Is it reverse applique? No. What do you all say? Hey, Fraz Noel, round corners, earth girl. Yes. Um, it does look like, it is applique, I would say for sure. This, the green is overlaid on top of the other, of the, the bowl of the cotton. I mean, like that's not reversed, right? I mean, I think that the green is, is last, right? It was last, it was put on last. But the, but the, the beautiful shape of the cotton ball, I'll zoom in again. I mean, what, what's going on here? I feel like it's maybe reversed, you know? That's my chair squeaking, hang on. I gotta go over here. Um, I can move around for you. It's, I mean, it's, you know what's great about having the, the, um, the library that I have you all is that, you know, these images don't exist on the internet. They, they don't exist, that's why these wonderful old books are so good, you know? It's like, I've got a really big library so I can go to the scanner and scan them in really high res for you. Because we can't find this stuff online, it's not like that online, you know? And so, so I hope, you know, that you can see, so, you know, well enough, the, the, this red piece. I think the consensus yeah. is that it's needle turn. It's needle turn. I think it is too. Yeah. But then I, this, I think the, that's the consensus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But then this top piece, the then the green went down and then the red mm -hmm. went down, right? It is needle turn. You all are good. It's so honey bee. So honey bee. <laughs> I'm so, you get, you get the duck and the, um, Champagne cork, it's so good to see you. I love it when you're in the chat. Um, so yeah, okay, great, I love it, I love it. And then we've got these wonderful strip piece settings. I mean, those red cornerstones, you know, sometimes, I mean, if you see cornerstones, what do you think? What do you think? I'm gonna make a poll. Can I make a poll? I'm gonna make a poll. Oh, nope, I'm not gonna make it there. That's our, that's for later. We're gonna watch some video in just a minute. Um, but I am going to, I'm gonna make a poll. I, you know what, Steph, sometimes I, I you know, it, 
to make it to make a poll, I used to sort of make them willy nilly. Well, I mean, I had like two shows where I was like, I'm going to do a poll, and it was like, why are we doing a poll on this? But I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, and it's going to be really easy. I am going to do. Do you think cornerstones are like I? Okay, here's my. You can help me phrase it. I feel like modern quilts don't have cornerstones. I feel like cornerstones are a hallmark of traditional quilts. And I yes, want to know I what people, yes. how do I phrase this question? Because I want to do a poll and it's it's easy because it's just like yes or no, right? Like, um, are, cornerstone, are cornerstones old fashioned? Ooh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Are cornerstones old fashioned? Oh, that's good. Yes or no. I'm not doing, I'm not doing a like, you know, it depends. I'm not doing it. So I just started the poll. And so in the chat, you might have to help Steph, you know, if people don't know where to see the poll, because, and, and you know, this is a good reason for you to come over to Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, it's awesome. I'm really glad that you're watching, but on Twitch, you can like vote in the poll and you don't have to be a subscriber or anything to vote in the poll. So uh, anyway, so the cornerstones, but it's interesting. The reason I even say it or want to talk about it is like, this seems so bright and fresh and, and modern. I mean, it just seems like really cool. And these cornerstones are huge. They're like this really big part of the quilt. So, so it's interesting to me, you know, when I look at this stuff. Kitty Hannah says, I love old fashioned stuff. I'm with you. Poll will be at the chat. Robin, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Linda. Linda's like, no. So yeah, you can vote on your screen, you know, at the poll at the top of the chat. You click on that and um, and you can vote yes or no, and we'll see what happens. The poll is up for five minutes. Okay, so there's another cotton bowl quilt, just one other one that I wanted to show you because this wonderful book, the Southern Quilts book, has uh, several cotton bowl quilts. So I wanted to show you a second one because the third one that I want to show you is the really special one. Um, this one is, and you know, this is in a book about Southern quilts. So the cotton wool, obviously, you know, the South being the major cotton producing region, you know, for a long time. Um, I'm going to read to you just a little bit from Kathleen Sullivan's writing about the cotton ball quilt, okay, from this book. Kathleen Sullivan writes, one of the most beloved and most graphic patterns from the South is the cotton bowl. With the rise in periodicals and quilt documentation books in the late 20th century, the cotton bowl pattern saw the resurgence in spite of the fact that it is a labor intensive design. Most new and old patterns are done in bright red or ox blood and green on a white ground. Did not know that. You know what we play when we learn something really good? We play this. That's what I do. I invented post-its. If you know Romy and Michelle's high school reunion, you get it. It's like, I invented post-its. Like, we're so smart, you know? Um, the earliest examples of cotton bowl quilts have pieced and applique. I want to get in really close tonight. Hang on. I think I finally got my lighting. Okay, yeah, great. Um, pieced, uh, okay, sorry. The earliest examples have pieced or applique sashes and or borders. This one does. One 1850s four block example has a double swag border. Okay, she's talking about other ones. Um, it would be interesting to know the specific origin of the quilt pattern, but we do have a few clues. In Greensboro stands Blandwood, the Italianate home of North Carolina Governor John Motley Moorhead. In 1844, he had an addition built that was designed by Alexander Jackson Davis, a New York City architect, who designed the state capitol building in Raleigh. Interesting. At Blandwood, the ceiling medallion and frieze designs around the walls at the ceiling were ancient designs, designs from an early handbook of ornament, a staple reference for designers and architects. Davis would surely have a copy of this type of book. Uh, the acroder, a gable finish, and stell crest, a tombstone ornamentation, designs are surely related to what we know as cotton ball. And there's much more to read, but you just have to get the book. I don't think this one isn't out of print. I should have mentioned that. This one's fairly new. And so is Lindsay McRae's book. So, I mean, there's just more, you know, there's more to, see, more to look at. There always is. But I think this is a really cool design. And I mean, steeped in history, right? I mean, the South and cotton, my God. You know, that's why I say when you look at quilts, you learn, you learn American history, you know, in all of its beauty and tragedy, you know? I mean, you start looking at a quilt and you start reading deeper and deeper and deeper and you really learn about America and it's not always pretty. 
And that's the true story. And the true story is always better than like the one that sort of gets told over and over. It isn't really true. You know, it's like, it, it's good. It's good, to, it's good to have the true story. And here is a true story <clears throat> for you. So this, this is a cotton ball quilt too. I'm gonna zoom in. This is a, a, a style shot from a book by Georgia Bone Steel. New ideas for lap quilting. Georgia Bone Steel. See now, one day, you know, if I get that, if I get that young uh, person from Loyola or DePaul who's like here, like you know, with like he headphones, just like you stuff, you know, but like they'll they'll be like hit it and they'll like press like some button and like the picture of the book will just appear and then fade away. I mean, I don't know. We could probably hook you up so you could do that. Anyway, but I'm like, look at the book. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. One day we'll, we'll be really fancy. But, but anyway, so this book, uh, New Ideas for Lap Quilting by Georgia Bone Steel. I have to tell you that this one was autographed for me by Georgia herself. Okay, let me, let me zoom in. Um, and the reason why I have that those are my text messages, that's kind of weird. To Mary, Georgia Bone Steel, January 2021. How about that? I love this pink cover board. Um, and Georgia Bone Steel does it again. First, she introduces us to introduced us to portable quilting and lap quilting, then more lap quilting. Now with new ideas and lap quilting, <laughs> Georgia brings us exciting, exciting techniques, okay, for over 50 quilts. So this, yeah, so okay, great, great. I did think of it. Great. This is the book that we're looking at. So I Georgia Bone Steel, you know, is a legend. She was, I think, the very first person on public television teaching people how to quilt. And she lives in North Carolina, and she's just, she's a goddess, right? She is a legend. She is fabulous. Oh, the poll. The poll, the poll has ended. And the poll ended. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to read you the poll. View results. Are cornerstones old-fashioned? Sorry. No. 67% of you said no. Cornerstones are not old fashioned. I love that. And and 33% of you said yes. So the no's, you know, the people who said no, cornerstones are not old fashioned did win the day. But there's that's a significant chunk. I mean it's a third. Two thirds of people said it, cornerstones are old fashioned, and a third said they're not. I love that. That means the the um, dialogue is is um, alive, right? People disagree with each other. Okay. So um, so Georgia Bone Steel, again, like we could do a whole and we will. We'll talk about Georgia Bone Steel for forever, right? She'll keep coming up. But this is a quilt called Cotton Bowl. And it was made in 1982. And I own this quilt. Yeah, I do. And I didn't bring it tonight because when I give talks to guilds, you know, guilds hire me to present to them. And I do a trunk show. It's one of the things that I do sometimes. And... You know, I gotta save, save. I gotta save the trunk show for the guilds. You know, I mean, they they pay me, they they organize, they do so much. You know, to get these speakers in to talk to them, and it to me, it's just very important that that, that that's special for them. You know, so I'm not gonna do a trunk show. I'm just not gonna do it. Um, I mean, I can talk about quilts. Cool That's Mary. Yeah. You don't know how many of these people in the audience. We 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 say we love them, but they could be lurking outside your office, ready to rob you of your Georgia Bone Steel. Listen, this quilt. <laughs> I, you know what? Oh, I'm clapping and doing, it's, it's really great. I mean, you, you can see like, so the story is here that I know word and bird nerd. That's what I'm saying. Look at her hair. Oh, Jacob jellies, Jacob jellies, by the way. Hello. I love it when you're here. So, so, um, we're going to look at video. I can't even, you got, you don't, you don't even know. You got to tune into the show because you never know what's going to happen. We're going to look at video of Georgia bone steel making this. Oh yes, yes we are. But here's what happened. So, and I have to send her, I have to send, Georgia needs to be watching this show. I didn't even think about it, but I'm, this is the tape I'm going to send her because Georgia Bone Steel is so cool. Okay. Here's how cool she is. She made, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> Seriously. <clears throat> Georgia Bone Steel made a documentary. She made a, a, a program called, um, the Great American Quilt Revival, I'm pretty sure. It's on DVD. Thanks, Kate, if you could look it up. Oh my God, she's an angel. Um, and she, it was great, it's great. And like, I was working on a documentary project for a while and unfortunately that project is like tabled, you know, and I had to accept it and I'll talk about it at some point. But my agent 
couldn't sell it, didn't sell it, it's fine. Because even if he had, who knows, I might have had to stop doing Quilt Nerd, you know, to like work on it. So everything works out. It really does. Anyway, but I wrote her a letter. I wrote Georgia Bone Steel a letter to tell her how much I admired her. And I just, I just thought she was awesome. And I really appreciated like everything she had done. Like I just wanted to write her a letter and tell her, you know? And she wrote me back and she wrote me back a letter and I won't read the letter because it's like my letter, but um, she wrote me back and she told me that making a quilt is like writing a letter. <laughs> and that it's like personal and it's from you and it takes time and it means something, you know? And I was like, Whoa. I was like this pretty much, only worse. And I, I think it was, yeah, it, that was before I bought this quilt. So let's look at this quilt again. So this is in the book. Okay, the, the quilt is in the book. And she's a classy lady, Cake, okay? I'm telling you. She's, yeah, so cool. And I, I saw this quilt, okay, it was like, I don't remember what happened first. No, it was, it was, it was after, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was after. Yeah, it was during the pandemic. It was during the pandemic. And I saw this quilt was for sale because Georgia Bone Steel has a website. And at a certain point, she started selling her quilts because there were so many. She had so many. She did a TV show. She did all this stuff, you know? I know. Yes. Yes, Robin's Nest. Um... Oh, oh. Um, so, so she was selling off a lot of quilts. I think there are a few still available. I'm not sure if you know if you can still buy them, but, but there was this one, and it was for sale, and it was through like the Southern Highland Craft Association or something. Okay, I had not spent the only time I spent that much money was like on like a winter coat, you know, that was like fancy or something. I saw it and I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it because I was like, I can't do that. I can't spend that much money. And I regretted it. I regretted it every day of my life. And at one point I looked again, it was months later and I looked again and it was still for sale. This quilt, Cotton Bowl. And I was like, Eric, I have to do something now. And I'm sorry. And I'm not sorry. I, I'll tell you later, you know, and I bought, and I bought it. And it, it's been on our bed. It is uh, one of my most prized possessions. It's amazing. So if you book me for your guild, you know, to do a trunk show, you can see the actual thing. And so in this book, you know, there's this, so, so Georgia sent me one of her books. So, um, and I've met her, I, I have met her a couple times, but it was just the best to have this letter. So in this book, she talks about this quilt, okay? And she talks about how to do it. And, and here, look at this. She's wearing this amazing vest, this patchwork vest, and she's wearing this in all of the how-to <laughs> how bits. I love it. I think it's so cool. It's really, really great. I love it. And uh, I mean, this blouse with the buttons. God, it's, oh God, I love those kinds of blouses. The, the 1980s fashion, I'm here for it. I love it. But she's talking about single surface applique, okay? And we're not going to, look, she's making the quilt. Now, it, it was probably a step out. That's what we call it when you're doing how-to content, you know, for TV or for magazines, you're doing the step outs. It's like when you're doing a cooking show, <laughs> for all of those of you who do cooking shows, um, uh, you, um, you have to, like, make a turkey ahead of time so you can show what the turkey looks like, you know, three hours after it's been cooking. So on Positive Threads, I can't do it. I can't do it because I save, I save showing the actual quilts for the trunk shows that I do for guilds. I, I got to do that. Because if I, if I do it here, it's not, you know, it's not special. You know, they're, they're paying me to come speak. And so I, I show the quilt when I do those, those talks. It's the right thing to do. Um, and so, so anyway, so, so she's probably not making, you know, the actual quilt. I don't know, maybe. The fabrics are very 1980s, but we're not gonna linger too much on, on this because I have video of her doing this and that is very exciting. Um, and so, yeah, I've got some other pictures from this book that I really, really like that I would show you, but I don't wanna, you know, if you say you're gonna show a, um, a video of Georgia Bone Steel making a quilt, you gotta show the video. Okay, Stephanie, I'm really glad I brought my plug-in for my phone because that was, really close. Okay. Um, hang on. Okay. Let's take a look. Now, when I bought this quilt, 
I didn't know. I did not know that this existed. I didn't know. You gotta believe me, I didn't know. You ready? We're not gonna watch all of it, so this is an episode. Well, okay, here we go. Let's just, let's just play on. Today's lesson is single surface applique. What? In the cotton bowl pattern as our design. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna hide the chat. I'm gonna hide the chat just for a second because, I mean, yeah. There it is. That's it. That's the quilt. It's on TV. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. You like the idea of using just four blocks for a whole quilt? This is a method of appliqueing and cutting away from the back side. We'll also learn the dress, the glasses. I am here for it. She's giving me like, I like, love her dress. Oh, it's so great. Not, like, not necessarily the colors, but I do like that dress. Yeah, I do too. You know, it is, it's great. The colors are, they're a lot. And this is a very, when you see the quilt up close, you know, that, that green, remember, this is the live stream thing. This is the vibe, right? We don't just watch a video together. We talk about it. People chat about it. So just, you know, if you're coming in late, this is, it's all good. You know, that, that green fabric is very, it's very, you know, 19, I think it was 1982 that she made this. 82. My mom, was she doing stuff with Liz yet? No, no, no. They weren't doing, they weren't doing TV. Georgia was a pioneer. Um, anyway, it's just, it's very of its time, but it's fabulous. The green and the orange is perfect. Okay. Six ways of enlarging our designs. Then the Hawaiian applique and the little Dutch Ooh. girl. She's gotten all wet this time. <laughs> we'll have a study of those. Now, don't forget your supply list. That was tracing paper, a pencil, and scotch tape. Oh, I'm, I'm, stick a fork in me. I'm done. The, the whole, just the, <laughs> the production value with the text on the thing. I love it. If I ever do a show on, like, TV, like, it's the, I want to do this. I want it all retro like this. Okay. <laughs> Applique. The word applique comes from the French word, which Applique. means to apply or put on. And we see it in patchwork from its most simplest form, our all-American little Dutch girl pattern. Yes. To the most elaborate form, the Hawaiian. Mm. We feel very flattered that Ruth Isaida from Florida has made this wall hanging Sorry. especially for our show. It's called Enchanting. Wait a minute. Who did she say? This. Hold on. We feel very flattered that Ruth Isaida from Florida okay. has made this wall hanging especially for our show. I'm going to put it on my notes. Enchanting Polynesi. And I need to stand corrected about something I said previously uh -oh. about Hawaiian quilting. Oh. It is not authentic Hawaiian quilting if you try to cut away underneath this, this yellow portion. I had mentioned that that was a possibility. Say, for instance, if this design were the yellow were a lot lighter than the background fabric, that you could cut it away. But Ruth claims that it is not authentic then. So You know what? One of the coolest words I ever heard, ever, was Ken Burns. He said in an interview, and Ken Burns, obviously, totally relevant because he's a quilt collector, right? The International Quilt Museum. Uh, did the first showing of his quilts and Quilt Folk did a whole thing on his um, quilt collection and I got to interview him for like 10 minutes. Um, anyway, he said on a video, he's talking about the Vietnam documentary and that got a lot of backlash and stuff and he said, well, one thing about my team that's so important and it's central to what everything that we do is that we are corrigible. Corrigible. He said, and I was like, what does that mean? And it means that they can, a person who is corrigible can be taught. They can be taught. They can say that they're wrong. They can say that they learned something. You know, if you think about an incorrigible child, that, cor that child is incorrigible. You know, they're impossible. They can't be taught. They won't listen, whatever. But he was like, we're corrigible. And it's one of my favorite things. It's like, what do I value? Like corrigibility. Anyway, I say it because I think it's a great word that's very useful. Here is Georgia Bonesteel, fully corrigible. She's like, I made a mistake. I did something that wasn't accurate and I'm gonna tell you with my whole chest. Okay. But we want to thank I love her that. I for respect making that. that point and making this beautiful wall hanging. I want to give you a nice tip on Hawaiian quilting or any other applique form. Okay. And that's something we're gonna be, it's a twenty seven minute video, so you know I as as your host I need to I need to get us oh look at this. Oh this is amazing. Okay, so let's do the cotton ball. This is this is really this is really something. <laughs> oh man. Oh god, I love her glasses. Okay. Here we go. Look. With your scotch tape, 
apply to the top and bottom of your tracing oh. paper. <laughs> Simply place that on your TV screen and cover the whole screen. And now with your pencil, we're going to trace the outline of the cotton bowl quilt. She's using the TV. We're going to trace around the outline of the cotton itself. See it bursting What's out happening here? of the entire. What? What's happening there? What is that? I mean, it's, it's graphics. I, I, it's really, it looks like pu puppeteering or something. I love it. But it's area, it's like and that is your template number one. A puppet. And mark that in the in the white outside area. Then number two starts up, and that is the pod. And then come over on the other Wait, side. Wait, I just saw. I just saw like and that is the pod felt. And then come over. I don't know. I don't on know. The other side. I have no idea. And that's your second number two template. Now while you're there, you're going to do this little green area right here and right there. And that's number three. There's another number three over here. And those are both done. Mark those number three template in light green. Light green. And number we know, four yes. starts here, comes up. And all of this is in your green fabric. Hey, accenting Rock Dog. Rock Dog, it's so good to see. The white and the gray pod. That was number four. Number five. Okay, is okay. this last large okay, leaf area. Okay, we got it. Now got keep it. in mind, if you're an artist, you can just draw the... You know that it's not that I don't want to hear Georgia. It's that, you know, yeah, we, I'm, 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 I'm here working for you, making sure you're entertained. So but you should definitely watch this entire thing. You should make this quilt. My God, that's what she's teaching you, right? And that book gives you all the instructions. All right. These designs on paper. But a lot of us have to rely on other means. These, these ways can also be applied to such things as china painting, needlepoint, or stained glass. The first one is the opaque projector. Oh, man. It's the only mechanical means of projecting a solid image on a wall. It works best in a darkened room and also on a cart that has wheels so that you can move it forward or back. Now, hang on just a second. There is a... Just a second. So, so let, me, let me ask you all. Let me ask the chat. This is a... This is why this format is great, right? I can talk to you, you can talk to me. Kate can talk to you, she can talk to me. The projector method, right, of, of drafting. I mean, this, this, this is one of the oldest, for Michelangelo, before Michelangelo, the uh, camera obscura, right? The camera obscura, uh -huh. wow, I mean. That's what I do. <laughs> I invented post-its. I mean, I the camera obscura was was the function. It was was the technology that the muralists use. That you know, you you made a drawing or whatever, and you you draft you you beamed it up on the wall. Basically, it was like a projector. Way 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 back when, I could not possibly define camera obscura or make one probably. Or it's, it's a box with a thing. Anyway, so the projector is doing that too. So like I'm as I want to, what I want to know is like, is there a better way? To, to draft, to, to copy a pattern, I mean, to put tracing paper up on the wall and project an image at the size you need, like, I mean, if you did it on your computer, you'd have to print it out, and you don't mm -hmm. have a and large... that's the way I do things. Right. I do things, I tape them together. And you tape them together, <laughs> right, right. But this is, yeah, this is, this old school stuff is pretty brilliant. I mean, you could argue that this is a way more efficient way because you can pull, you can, mm -hmm. you can roll out your big paper the size so you don't have to tape stuff together and you don't also don't have to worry about, you know, if you print things out in quadrants or something or even more than quadrants in, mm -hmm. I don't know, in, in eights or something. T yeah, talk to me. Tell me what you mean. Tell me well, what you mean. know what's really interesting? I mean, I, when I look at this, I think she's actually probably got some pretty um, advanced items there, I mm -hmm. think. I mean, I remember when I was in high school, the overhead projectors, I think somebody just said that doesn't look like an overhead projector. If they were a big oh. gigantic thing, like with an arm. And yes, then, yes. Like, you know, yeah. always used it in science class and stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know what? The sewing community, like uh, garment construction, costuming, I assume there's probably lots of nerds where there's that overlap. Uh -huh. um, but there's a lot of people that are using projectors for sewing patterns now. Mm, so really? instead of buying a PDF, yeah, instead of buying a PDF pattern and printing it and taping it together or taking it to a copy shop, people are buying projectors. Wow. And there's a thing you do to calibrate it, and you like they hang them above their cutting table, and wow. it's so cool. That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, and the technology. I mean, it's amazing.
That is amazing. Yeah, I see, yeah okay. People are doing yeah, people it. People have done this. Yeah, people are doing this stuff. It's really cool. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That is so scrappitude's like I'm needing to do this for an upcoming project. You know, if you yep, Jacob Jellies, they're like they're doing it. Clothes patterns. This is great. I mean, it's you know, it's really interesting. Sometimes Sometimes <laughs> it's okay. It's like, I'm going to stick to a computer. <laughs> the Flintster says my mom had a long opaque projector when I was a kid. It was great. I think the same thing. She, I think it's the same thing she's using. Probably what goes around comes around J dancer. It's like the wristwatch, right? I maintain it is faster. It's faster than the phone. When you look at the time, like what time is it? Uh, hang on. Uh, it's this click. And with it, what watch it's this. That's it. That's it. Anyway, interesting conversation. I enjoyed it very much. Let's continue. Home and larger machine that you can order from the back of a magazine, and they work very well. It sometimes relies on a very small. Wait, what is that one? Hold back. on. Hold on. There is a home and larger machine that oh. you can order from the back of a magazine, and they work very well. It sometimes relies on a very small design, so you would have to go to a copying machine and have that design reduced. Of course, there's your favorite <laughs> Sorry. foam carousel. Oh boy, oh boy, wow. Woo, taking me back. That was, wow, whew. There are people who don't even know what that is, Steph. There are people, who, they're just like, what is that donut? Item. I mean, taking a picture of your design with a 35 millimeter camera and then Jeez. putting it into a slide tray. <laughs> and you remember our eagle from last week oh. projecting that. Or it could even be the badge from the sleeve. The eagle is there. <gasps> that's so great. She's like, you can make a quilt from that. I mean, that's so good. It, oh my God. Remember last episode we talked about the telephone company? The, the yes, Bell telephone company? That she, yes, she had access to a projector. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. It's so creative. It's so great. I took a picture of our de cotton bowl design, and now I can enlarge this by making the carousel go either forward or back. So good. Now let's look at an overhead projector. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Remember the dry erase markers? I mean, before there were whiteboards, there were overhead projectors. Oh God. This device also enlarges or reduces but it does rely on some clear acetate, which you need to purchase at an office supply store and get a special pen to go with that. <laughs> then simply trace your design on this. And as you can see, the eagle is then transposed. And we'll take a look exactly how we used the eagle last time. Am I in algebra class hating Most everything? Most of these devices are available at your local libraries or schools. Oh, I'm sure that's so great. Look at that. That's, that is quilt art. No, Mary, yes. can you go run a few copies off on the mimeograph? Oh, good heavens. I, you know what, that purple, I think that's why I don't like purple. I just, I just realized I'd be it. willing to have you use them. Can you see the eagle? I love that. Now for the pantograph. The pantograph is one of the oldest tools used for enlarging or reducing. Oh my it God. It relies on overlapping beams. It has a base, which you need to anchor in place. You also need a very uncluttered area, which is sometimes hard to find in a sewing room. I've never seen this. I've never seen this vis-a-vis -vis quilting. I've never seen it at, at all. I mean, I'm, I don't. I don't need to pretend. I don't. I know things when I don't. I've never seen this. It also yes, has. Yes, I've seen this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, a tracing thing. Oh, I love it. Point, which is right at this base. Then on the other end of the beam, you will have your pencil. Oh. The ratio screws can be changed. We have it set on two and a quarter. Oh my God. Once you start tracing, it really, you need both hands to do this. Once you start tracing, you simply come down oh. and I'm coming around the base oh. of the booty to come in and meet. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was that? Did Georgia Bose still just say booty? She did. And I think it's going to go on the soundboard. Really, you need both hands to do this. Once you start tracing, oh, you need both hands to do this. I'm sorry, Georgia. God bless you. I love you so much. When I send you this tape, you know I'm having fun. You're gonna love it. But you, you simply come down, and I'm coming around the base of the booty. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done. Oh God. <laughs> I mean that. You simply come down 
and I'm coming around the base of the booty. Let's continue. To come in and meet this space <laughs> right here. Once you have gone around that, I think it helps Ooh. to then also come in, take a oh, ruler. That's my friend. Or maybe even a flexible curve to get and go over that pencil mark again. Sometimes it's a little bit wavy, and that helps to get it in place. But this will work also. It just takes time and a clean space. The last device that I rely on most often means buying some enlarged... Did you talk about booties more? I had to say hi to my friend. Okay, never mind. Graph paper. Sorry. You can buy this at most, most fabric stores, or you can buy your own graph paper and make your own squares, depending on how large you want your design to be formed. I would also make a grid that can be placed over your original tracing. Hmm. Now... Yeah, that's like really old school. I remember in art school, I mean, in art, art class in high school, we did that. You know, we had to do like a, yeah, a copy of a thing. This is great content. It's great content. It's evergreen, right? You can, it's good now for us, and it was good then, even if the technology changed. I mean, the pantograph, that's what, she, that's what it was, right? I mean, uh, yeah. That's yeah. some like, that is some Michelangelo kind of stuff. Okay. Once you start Amazing. that, and present a code, both vertically and horizontally, then we can go to our area. Let's go all the way down to our 1A. You can see that I have traced wow. just that one little scoop area. Yep, yep. Then I come over to 2A. Amazing, amazing. Yes, there are many ways to do this, and I love it. You should definitely, let's get some fabric up in, up in, the, up in the mix. It's brilliant. I mean, what did she show us? She showed us like eight ways, like eight eight ways or something like that to get to get that design, you know, from from the book into your hands. It's amazing. Okay. The cotton bowl quilt is done. I am working on the sham, and I have several of these in progress. Oh yeah, pillow shams came with the quilt, matching pillow shams because 1982. So you'll just follow along with They're me today. Gorgeous. Your base needs to be prepared. And I like to think of that as being cut 24 and a half inches square. Hmm. Now, finish, that means it'll be 24 in your quilt. I have gone ahead and placed a gray border around this 24 inch square because I wanted the cotton to look like it was just bursting out of the whole quilt. And that's exactly what happened. This initial piece has been put on. And once it was put on in the system that I'm gonna show you, then, the back of the foundation was cut away. You can see exactly where it came from. Here is the piece which was cut away. The only place that this overlaps mm. is where the white meets the print foundation. Interesting. The same thing for the pod. It was placed and then cut away on that side mm -hmm. and on, on this side. It was cut, it was sewn, and then cut away. So now we're going to go, our next step after making the templates, coding our big master sheet, is going to take our number four and we're going to cut out this figure to put on this. We'll go now to the dry iron. Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot going on, you know? It's like I want the, the show and I want the book, right, together, because it's a lot. But I mean, but if you're following along and she said, you know, the green is number four, earlier on she was like, the green is number four. The, the orange is this and that. Okay, I mean, I, you know what? You know what's hard about this show? It's like I I can't see you, right? I can I can read the chat. I can follow along, and stuff. You can help me. I mean, sh should I let her, should I let her let her play? I mean, should I should I should we see this next part or should I go into the um, there's there's the sewing? Okay, she's doing that. I mean, she's doing she's doing a lot of applique on the. Well, this is interesting. So, so here, here, so one thing about this quilt, I just want to say, this is important. Um, I'm going to just grab the picture again, really quick. We're going to go back to the video, but um, I wish I had a full flat shot of the quilt. I don't. I have this from the book, but I want to tell you that the the border of this quilt. I mean, sorry. So it's a square quilt, okay? But what's fascinating about what she did. It's, it's square, it's not a scalloped edge. But she raw edge appliques the scallop. That That is cut and sewn to the top. You know what I mean? Like she, she yes, yeah. 
So is it it's raw edge? So yeah. like does she use a satin stitch yeah. or Yeah. So so the border you know of the quilt is just that orange fabric. But then she cuts out. It's not reverse applique. It's stitched onto the top. And it's gorgeous. It's so great. So it's like, you know, a scallop border, to me, I mean, I, I would have to be sewing a lot more, a lot re more regularly to be, to be really, to make that work. But her technique here was brilliant. She made a square, a square quilt, you know, whatever. She made a, a geometric quilt, but then she, but then she put, she cut out those pieces and she stitched them down. And, and it's so great. It's so cool. And in case she doesn't get to it, because she might not, it might be just a side note. I showed this quilt on my Instagram. And I was going to look for that video. When I got it, I did an unboxing. And it's on my Instagram. You should follow me at Yo Mary Fonz. And we also have uh, at, at Quilt Nerd Show. We just started our Instagram, Quilt Nerd Show and Yo Mary Fonz. So follow us there. But um, when I got this quilt in the mail, I did an unboxing on Instagram. I think that's probably still out there. Anyway, um, I talked to I talked to Rod Kirikoff, okay, when I bought this, I was like, I wasn't wrong, right? And he was like, no, you weren't wrong. And he's this great collector, right? And it was when I was looking at the quilt with him that we saw this. So in the corners, and like I said, I don't think she's gonna spend, the show that she did is 27 minutes, so I doubt she'll get to this, but in the corners of the inner border, there are these little shapes. And we were like, what is that? Like what? They're bull weevils. Yeah. Yeah, somebody already called that out. Did they really? Some brilliant, some brilliant nerd, oh. and I, I missed who said it. Show yourself. Oh. oh but some, somebody did mention that. It is so cool that you saw it. That's what I do. I invented post-its. You invented post-its if you saw that. I mean, that is awesome. But it is, um, yeah, the, and, and, and what's amazing about these little things, so there's the, the ones up by my head there, is they, they travel around the quilt. So they change positions. They change directions, I should say, right? So, so this little guy is like marching around. He's going do 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 do. Better turn that way. Do 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 do. And it's just darling. It's it's just darling. Who Penny Catherine? You know what? You know what? That's what I do. I invented post-its. I can't really play it enough. It's the newest sound on the on the sound word. You're probably gonna hear it a lot. Okay. So okay. So let's let's just let me just see. Let's see her at the machine a little bit. Okay. Um, Steph, uh, entertain them. I'm going to let this play and I'm going to grab Around some this. wine. Hang on. And once that's been traced on the exact leaf edge, I'm ready to sew at the sewing machine. Mm. Hope you've admired my dress today. It's made by Joe oh. Diggs from Portland, Maine. Joe Diggs? It's made by Joe Diggs? She just said it was made by Joe Diggs. <gasps> some of you know Joe Diggs. We're going to talk about it. That's, that, that's crazy. Like one quilt legend made a dress for another one and it's just full of applique. We're at the point where I have taken our right. template number four. It has been drawn around. We know the exact place to do our straight line of stitching. Now that straight line of stitching, I'm just finishing that, is anchoring this figure in place. That positions it so then I can trim around the outside. Once that's been done, I will come and with my palms up and with these applique scissors it allows me to come in very close to this figure and as you can see I'm cutting away the excess that was why I cut that fabric a half an inch wider all the way around because then I wanted to come in very close it wouldn't have worked if I'd cut the exact size I would have had a hard time sewing that close to the edge the other two marks that you see on here have been marks that I have transferred from the template onto the fabric. That tells is it making me that sense? in this area... I You're really good at sewing, though, Steph. I mean, is it making sense to you? I know we skipped some, though. I needed to anchor it in yeah. place. Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. But I don't need to do a satin stitch there because my leaf, my last leaf, number five, will overlap that area in just a few minutes. So it won't be seen. It'll be underneath. But I would continue this cutting away with the palms up getting very close, and that's gonna give me a line to zigzag on 
plus the stationary and the reinforcement of the straight line of sewing. Interesting. Now I have one that's a little further along and we see, can see step outs. Exactly step outs. It's like, okay, now we've basted the turkey, now we're gonna, you know, do the stuffing. So it's probably not the quilt that I now own. If you just came in, I own I own this quilt. And I feel like I don't know. I mean, I, I've made quilts. I've made a, a good number of them. I give them away. I, I give them to charity. I just dropped off a couple. I just I just put a few, like two, two lap size quilts and one smaller, like sort of, I don't know, bigger than a crib size, but anyway, sort of like a toddler size quilt that I did, I think for Quilty. And I put them in the clothing donation box in my neighborhood. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, when we talk about quilts as heirlooms, like this one, I, I really, I really, I'm going to have it forever, you know, and I'm going to hopefully give it to somebody who will appreciate it. It's a piece of history. It's Georgia Monsteel, you know, and it's this quilt and it's, it's on TV too. And I, again, I did not know that when I bought it, I was, I couldn't believe it when I saw it anyway on TV. Okay. So let's, let's, let's move along. So you, you got to watch this episode. She's amazing. Oh, she is doing the cotton yeah, weevil. It is based on some unusual figures, kind of the hexagon elongated. Wait, let me one, see. Let me see. Hey, hold on. Hold the on. The orange and, but Here we go. it is a cute little insect um, <laughs> with a strange little long snout. Aww. And he has been designed to go in the four corners of the quilt. No. Now, I wanted to give you just a few tips in putting him together. It is based on some unusual figures, kind of the hexagon, elongated one, and mm -hmm. this figure also. Once the triangles are sewn to the body, I would then take advantage of our hole punch with our templates. Oh, Remember how important that is. Here is our template. Oh my God, I remember my mom doing this. When they, when you cut templates out of, you know, of, of, of template plastic or whatever, hole punch so you could, you could, oh Knowing that we're going to punch Whoa. out those holes and once they are in position, then you'll know that you sew just up to that hole punch, wow. which is your quarter inch, it's, stop it's and brilliant. backstitch, and then the little head is in place. Then the trapezoids can be sewn down Amazing. just to that place. And you can see the little blue dot lined up, stop and backstitch, and then it will swing readily around. IWC so that did it. Once you get that done, then you have this hexagon applied to the bottom of the bug. Now, you're probably saying you thought all insects had six legs. Well, <laughs> this one only has four. Every once in a while, we can have some artistic liberty. So I only <laughs> put four on them. There's two, under, two other legs underneath someplace. I love it. But that is the, the little bull weevil. That no! goes on the quilt. That's it. Like that's my quilt for sure. That's the that's the finished one for I sure. I could look at the quilt with me for a few minutes. Mm. Okay. I now look at that pattern. That this, the quilting pattern, right? In the in, she might talk about it. She might talk about it. It's almost at the end. Yeah. I just love the quilting in this. I want to commend and congratulate the Holly homemakers from Pocomoke City, Maryland. They did a superb job. And just look at the table design that they have, we have used oh, in the yeah. overlapping borders. Cable. And I think that's very effective. It's great. And the bursting cotton coming over the gray, I think they did an excellent job and I certainly want to congratulate them. That's I hope great. you enjoy making a cotton bowl quilt. And even more importantly, I hope you'll enjoy coming with us next week when we have a tour and insight into the cotton production. It's called From Field to Fabric and it's a marvelous chance to understand what's happening with cotton in our country. We hope wow. to see you then. Thank you for joining us today. We love you, Georgia. Mwah. Incredible. Wasn't that great? Wasn't it just the best? It's just the best. Now, one last look at this quilt because I want to just show you one thing I didn't point out. What makes this quilt so, so great, I think, is look how the cotton bowls are breaking the frame. Because this shot is covered up by the pattern, which is sort of unfortunate in my mind. But like, do you see, I mean, the cotton is, when she says it's bursting, she, she's right. It, it breaks into the sashing or the border of the quilt. It, it enters, you know, it, it's, it's brilliant. And, and I think that's what like Rod and I were like, that kind of elevates it. It kind of brings it to this different level because the cotton really is bursting out, right? It's just, it's like really, it's really great. It's really great. 
So that's that. How about that? Um, I thought you would enjoy it. So, so we have to take a break because we got to do the giveaway. I don't want to take a break because the, the second half of the show, it's, I mean, I don't know. Is it the second half? I've got some really, really, like for now for something completely different, we're going to look at the, the work of Ms. Nagin. I think, I don't know. I think it's Reese, Reese Nagin. Anyway, do, do not, it, it, this is why quilts are so interesting to look at, right? Because there's such variety. It's amazing. So we went to like 1982 and public television, and now we go into like silk, okay? Silk and chiffon and like laying things over things. And I also have video of the artist making stuff in her studio. Amazing. One minute, one, one video is like two minutes and 30 seconds. Another one's like three minutes or something. So they're much shorter, but you, you got to see this stuff. Okay. You got to see this stuff. So Steph, are you, are you prepared for this giveaway? And can oh, you're good. Okay. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to run to the bathroom. I'm going to put on the cake break. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Um, and I'm going to run, get the actual book too. Okay. 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 Yeah, I don't know what the book is, so. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, oh, it's, um, yeah, yeah, you know what? I did not remind anyone that this was happening. Sorry, hang on. Let me also get rid of my most embarrassing uh, little green screen problem there. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, that's not it. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody calm down. No. Okay, there it is. Um, okay, I will be right back. It's Historic Australian Quilts by Yannette Jarrow. And I am oh, going okay. to run get it right now. Okay. Okay, here I go. I'll be right back. All right, you guys. Well, you know, I have to say a few things before, uh, you know, I do the drum roll. Because, um, you know, the pie hut reminds the cake to do some things. Um, <laughs> so I did want to mention, I know we've got some folks um, watching from YouTube and Facebook. Um, and it looks like there might be some people that actually have met Mary or taken classes with her. So that's so awesome. I'm so glad that you guys are here and watching. Um, just want to make sure you know that um, she is only able to see the Twitch uh, chat. So if you've chatted on Facebook or YouTube, um, her mods are watching, um, you know, just to see if you need anything, but she's not able to see those, but we'll definitely relay anything that anybody has said over there. So um, also that is, that's a great incentive to come on over to Twitch. Um, if you have a Facebook account or you have a, a YouTube account, it's just as easy over here at Twitch. Um, it's just a little different uh, because it, it's a, a platform that's just a little different than YouTube and Facebook. So um, I also wanted to remind everybody about merch. Um, I know I saw some uh, comments uh, in our dis Discord group about merch, and um, it is, oh gosh, I'm terrible, I didn't have it up. It's, uh, it's threadless. Let me grab that link, put it in here, um, and put it in the chat. I actually need to get... Um, I have a double pink shirt. I have to get a poison green one, so um, if you haven't gotten merch, uh, Stop by there and check it out. Um, I know we had a few people on uh, Discord that had posted pictures of themselves and or family and friends wearing some of the very cool shirts that we have over there. So that's some fun stuff. Um, if you're new here and you don't know anything about the merch, um, we have, oh yes, definitely, you must buy Quilt Nerd clothing. <laughs> um, the t-shirts are very cool, and if you are into weird quilts, you or, or old quilts, you may recognize the, the references that are on the t-shirts. Um, one is turkey red, one is double pink, one is poison green, and the other is antimony. And these are the names of the old dyes that were in old fabrics. Um, and so, you know, it's like the secret handshake for the quilt nerd when uh, you see each other wearing your antimonies and the rest of the world doesn't need to know that means cheddar. <laughs> it's just our secret. Um, oh, Mother Nature asked how long does it take to arrive? That is an important thing to know about um, Threadless right now uh, because Mary is in a small office and doesn't have um, a warehouse to keep t-shirts in. Um, it is Threadless prints these t-shirts on demand. So when you order it, that's when they're gonna go print it. So they're in Chicago, um, but they do often take like a week or two to get stuff out. So just keep that in mind. Um, obviously, if you're buying these things for Christmas or for the holidays, uh, they are available, so get them while they last. Um, 
And I know you guys want me to do the drawing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Were you plugging right. merch? Were you doing the merch? Yeah, I was plugging That's merch. So oh, awesome. cool. Do they ship to Canada? I'm, you know, I don't know, but I bet they do. I bet they do. Um, yeah, Threadless is a, it's a, you know, it's a pretty well known company. Um, you know, they're, they're. Um, I don't want to disparage us, but they're not this shoestring. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, we're we're definitely shoestring. The more people who buy merch and subscribe, the less shoestring we will be. We'll be like Velcro snaps at a certain point. We won't yeah, be shoestring, and then yeah, we'll be like, sure. then we'll be like zippers <laughs> on like boots. All right. Okay. So go ahead. Let me do the. Are you ready? Oh, you got it. Hold it I up. Got it. Okay. All right, let's it's do the beautiful. Job. Oh wait, and Steph, I forgot. It was it was sitting on my it was sitting on my on my oh, desk. Oh yes yes yes. I your, forgot. Is it the historical Australian books? And then is it your book too? Yep yep. I was That's down in my it. storage unit, and I found a box. It's like really the last box of the book I did for C and T back in twenty. Oh God, 15, 13, 14. I was close. So it's signed, and I'll send it to you as well. So it's a double. It's a double giveaway. So when you when you come over to Twitch, I heard you say that. Come over to Twitch, man. The party's on Twitch. It's so much fun over here. Yeah. And don't be afraid of Twitch. You probably said that too. Jeff Bezos owns it. So, you know, could it be really Yes. Ever? Yes. <laughs> he owns everything. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah let's not go there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yes, I, I, did, I did fail to mention that, though. Um, Facebook and YouTube folks. If you are, uh, if you come over to Twitch and you join the channel, then you can, and if, if you are with Amazon Prime, you can join That's for true. free That's true. Um, and you get into these great drawings. And I know That's that true. there are a number of nerds who are sporting some really cool stuff, um, whether it's uh, tools and uh, neat stuff from the International Quilt Museum mm -hmm. or... Um, a lovely scarf that if I ever meet Hannah in person, I might wrestle away from her because it's a very cool scarf. <laughs> kitty, kitty Hannah won that scarf, um, man. I do yeah. want to see it. Yeah, see it. so. Yeah. Very exciting. Okay, all right. Can we do away. the drum roll? Okay, drum roll. <laughs> um... It is. Auntie Sin. Oh Auntie my gosh, she just posted. <laughs> Auntie Sin, and you just posted. Can we. Can we get the keep quilts weird with the hat quilt on it as a bag or t-shirt? When I was looking, it was only a sticker or magnet. Um, yes, and also, congratulations, you, you just won. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Auntie Sin. Congratulations, oh my god! <laughs> you, and you want, and okay, yes, the, okay, hang on, hat. And, and, and just to prove to people that I don't, that the drawing is not always for the last person that comments. Yeah. Is that what happened again? Did it happen again? I guarantee, <laughs> believe me, twice, believe I me. I swear I am using a random number generator is, off of the uh, subscription list. <laughs> it, it is it is definitely not fixed. <laughs> like, I I don't know how we would even do that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's great. smart enough to do that. Auntie Sin. <laughs> Auntie Sin won. That's so great. And yes. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Quilting Politic. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, yes, it is possible to do, to get one of the, um, the hat and quilt things, the hat and quilt designs. And you were looking for a bag, a bag or a bag or a t-shirt. Yes. I can bag, do a bag or t-shirt. I can do a bag. Yeah. I, you know, you guys, um, there might be one that I also want. I, I know a person, so, um, oh, yeah, it's I'll true. pass it along. It's <laughs> true. You know what? Actually, actually, I'm going to do something real quick because I have to pull up the internet anyway. Um, Auntie Sin, way to go. I mean, that, it's so much fun to win. I don't mean to like, not. I want to focus on your win. You won. You won two books. One signed for me and another one. I mean, this historic, this is beautiful. It's really beautiful. And this one's new. It was published in... 2001, really? Wow, it's fancy, it's very fancy. Um, I'm gonna look at something here real quick. Threadless, because. While you're looking that up, I did a yeah. sweet, sweet Peas and Taters mention something that thank you for reminding me for our Facebook and YouTube friends. Um, you can come over to Twitch. You you, you uh, do not have to chat if you don't want to. It's true. Um, but it's you're true. also welcome to just come here and watch. That's, that's also an option. Um, totally. But, you know, some people some people prefer Facebook. Some people prefer YouTube. That's cool, too. We're, we're glad you're watching. 
I could not have said it better. It's so it's so true. Um, I really, really love quilts, and we all do, and we want to talk about how cool they are and like and learn about the world through them. And so um, we have a lot of people in the chat who love to chat, and we have people who never do. They're the lurker lounge, and so you can totally be in the lurker lounge. And what I said at the top of the show, too, which is so important, is that we want you to come to Twitch not because, like, and maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I should just be mysterious, but it's like, it's not because like there's some like, oh, well, we just need you to come to Twitch because, you know, we just don't know how to do memberships in three platforms, okay? And if so, and to like chat and everything, it's like really, it's really, it's a lot. I and mean, we're, we're just doing our best over here. So being on Twitch is, is great, you know, because it's fun and it, you can do stuff, you can chat and be in the giveaways. And it's also really, really great when you support the channel with a subscription. It's shipping the books, you know, it comes down to that. So this is, this is the shop and uh, we have a saying around here, keep quilts weird. Um, because we, we like quilts that are, you know, that are unusual, right? We like quilts that are, are, um, uh, original, very original quilts that where, where people don't, they're not afraid to break convention. They're not afraid to really be themselves. And sometimes it takes making art to really find out who you are anyway. And so, um, you know, these quilts, I mean, look at this guy. There's the, look, there's in this quilt, which is an old, this is an old traditional quilt. You know, I forget. How old? I think I say it. Yeah, 1850. Um, this quilt, sorry, uh, that's on our little sticker here. Look at that fanny pack. Um, <clears throat> look, look at what's going on here. There's one black horse in that quilt, and there's a little black sheep. Look at him up there. There's a little black sheep, and it's it's weird, you know, it's weird. And our backwards N in our logo. This was me doing a little logo action before we actually had a logo but the the backwards n comes up a lot of times in um uh, in uh older quilts with applique on them because uh we don't know why it's kind of a mystery but sometimes those ends were reversed on quilts and we love we love how that looks we think it's great and then there are these t-shirts this one is one of my favorites i, I finally did laundry so i'm going to wear my turkey red t-shirt on saturday night but turkey red you know a historic uh color a historic um that's quilt nerd 2022 uh historic color we've got we've also got you know poison green double pink we just we like to do nerdy things and so Aunt, auntie sin the winner what i want to do because you won you're the winner tonight one of one of my favorite stickers that we sell is the keep quilts weird quilt nerd um hat and heart quilt which you know it's uh the the, the description is uh the, this quilt featured the quilt featured here was created with passion by a new york woman who signed her name old maid finished in 1850 it's been called one of the most touching documents in american quilts bordered by the quilt nerd clarion call to keep quilts weird the heart and hat valentine will look lovely and rebellious wherever applied so the answer is yes auntie sin i will make sure this is available on a tote bag the t-shirt, not yet. We're not that we're not that advanced yet, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, this quilt. Okay. Well, that was great. That was a great cake break and a little merch plug too. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to show you. I'm gonna show you the video of Reese. <laughs> well, actually, let me ask you. So her name is spelled like this. I want to ask the chat because I don't know. Hey, finally crafted by Care. It's so good to see you. You know what? You're getting like a flood of welcome baskets starting now. We're so glad that you're here, that you came over to the Twitch thing. I know it's new for a lot of people, but it's not scary. And it's really fun because the community of people who watch this show, um, this is some quality, this is some quality people. I know because we've been hanging out for a while and it's, it's really cool and the more, of you we find you know the, the more fun it is um and so uh so so those of you you're very wise so the, the 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 way this this person spells her name is with a it's not an umlaut okay so this is this is what i need help with how do you pronounce look at all those those welcome baskets they're for you they're for you they're for anybody who's new but finally crafted by carrot you are. Oh, Mary, put the chat back up. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is this is why I need you. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. So I, I just put it back. Okay, now it takes just a second to like populate or do its thing. Um, I'm gonna put it up again here. 
um, so everybody can see it. I'll wait until that starts, gets going in there just a minute. It takes, it takes a second. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll make it just a little bit bigger. Um, come on, chat. I need you. Um, here we go. So I'm going to put it in right here. There it is. It's R-I-S-E, and there's a, there's two dots over the E. You know, Reese? Reese? I just don't know. I feel so I dumb. was thinking maybe Reese. I don't know if that E would, I don't, I never know what the umlaut does to an E. Right. Because it doesn't, isn't it different by language, maybe? E, probably. What the umlaut does. <sighs> Scandinavian is maybe different than, say, Germanic. I don't know. Right, exactly. You know what? Yeah. That's what I do. I invented post-its. <laughs> That was a. In this case, we did not. Oh, what's oh, your? It's Risa. 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 Is is that right, Etrecoat? Hello, Etrecoat. By the way, Risa. 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 Hey, now I read, I read what you said, Etrecoat. R e e s. Risa, and then e. Risa. Mm -hmm. Risa. Finally crafted by. Finally crafted by Kara. Sorry, I read your name wrong. I read your name wrong. And that's in like total like. English, like American. I, I was like, finally crafted by Kara. You're Kara. I will not mess it up again. Um, if Scandinavian, so so artisan. Ed loves the mugs. Me too. Um, yeah, the mugs are coming as well. So so so. Um, sorry, uh, Risa. 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 Okay. So so it, Steph, if you if you get a better like if you can help me with that again, that's great. Um, but I'm gonna. I I'm think gonna... we remember. I think we remember the Tee to Fefe scandal of. <laughs> Of June or July. <laughs> Tivive. I mean, I feel so dumb. That was, yeah. That I mean, that show with my sister was so fun. But it was, a, it was a classic case of like, this show. I don't, I don't want to over prepare for this show, but I do need to know like pronunciations. <laughs> and so I'm feeling a little tender at the moment because I should, I should feel like I should know this. Okay. So she was born in Connecticut. Interesting. So here is the bio of Ms. Nagan. Oh, no, I was going to show you the video. Let, let, let me do that. Let me do that. I'm going to show you because it's two minutes and 47 seconds. And who knows? Maybe she'll, maybe someone will say it. But even if she doesn't, that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, we are going to, we're going to learn all about her. Okay? So here, this is her in her studio. And I think this is very interesting, especially because we were with Georgia on her TV set. So now we're going to go to Miss Nagin. Here we go. This was, this was filmed, uh, it was posted in 2008. Um, and it says, a look at the working process of Reese, or Risa, I'll say Risa until further notice, uh, Risa Nagin, whose quilting is included in the exhibition Material Matters, Quilt Making in the 21st Century, uh, which was on view in 2008 at the Columbus Museum of Art. Okay, let's hear. I guess I could, I'll just show you um, the piece that's gonna be in the museum. Um, it's called heliotaxis, which um, is a scientific term for um, how plants move and other organisms move toward the sunlight. And we wanted to do a site-specific installation, and I began to think about, well, what is my work about, and how do I do this? I've never done a site-specific installation mm. before, so I decided I would work with sheer fabric, which I've been doing for many, many years, and I walk a lot in the morning, and... I like the sunrise, and I love the way, especially if you're um, in Pittsburgh and you're walking along the river or near a reservoir, the changes in the light are very beautiful and subtle, and the water changes colors, and there are these mm. bizarre, unexpected reflections, and it's very, it's always very calm and quiet, and I always feel happy in the morning. <laughs> Nothing's wrong yet. Nothing's um, so wrong yet. Nothing's wrong yet. I feel that way. I feel that way. Those were the things I was thinking about, and... Um, I had also been doing these funny little drawings in my studio. Mm, I love that. Oh, so I found a picture of the work that she that she did, which isn't in the video. I'm very excited. So this this is important to note, or it's interesting to note this because you'll see. In my sketchbook, I can make sort of messy things, and I was, you know, to fix them, I would stick color paper on here and make these little collages. And um, I kind of liked the weird shapes and mm. forms I was getting and decided to, to try and use those in the piece. I had... So it's Risa 
Thank you, Bridgewater. And then also, um, Mother Nature pointed out some of her quilts are on sale, uh, are, are for sale on Artsy for thirty six hundred bucks. Scale drawing of the room, and, and I designed the piece on top of this. So I just designed a rhythmic flow of forms that would work with the architecture and uh, form the, the structure, the base structure for the piece, and then everything else. It looks like Calder, Alexander Calder. So no? It was a series of scrims that built forward from that in space into the room. I made these little grid things that I, you know, put directly on the, the drawing. And uh, just measure them like the Renaissance painters did. I sat there. Okay, this is so many inches. This is so many inches. And then I put those on big tracing paper drawings like this one on the wall. Oh, this oh, oh! be on top of a piece of stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you say big tracing paper things on the wall? We just... We just saw that with Georgia. When's the last time we talked about tracing paper on the wall? It happens in this show. It happens all the time. Spooky, wonderful things happen all the time. I love it so much. In two minutes and 47 seconds, we had spooky action at a distance. And I will have, probably will. I don't know if I need to with these, but I probably Where's will. Where's the pantograph? Exactly. Blue on the back of these. And, Dee Dee, you got it. Iron them onto the silk. So, and honey, Pittsburgh for the win. With a couple little oh, that's so cool. Look at that. It looks like a, a like a, a costume, like some sort of, you know, tribal sort of like a ceremonial, you know? And so that'll, that'll be the process for putting these back together and making the new scrims. Love it. Love it. So interesting, right? So Risa, Risa. So now let's, let's learn about this person. Okay. So I have... So, the Smithsonian. So some of her work is at the Smithsonian. First, let me read to you what this is. So I found this, uh, a description of this quilt. So this is really famous. This, this quilt of hers, and I'll zoom in. <clears throat> here, here is what I know about this quilt. Okay, let's go in really deep. Look at that. I mean, first of all, the materials, okay? The materials used in this quilt, which was made in 1993, it's called drop cloth. Drop cloth. It's made from silk, polyester, cotton, acetate, rayon, cellophane, thread, acrylic paint, and gouache. The techniques she used Stained, it is stained, painted, pieced, layered, appliqued, embroidered, quilted, and hand sewn. You know, one of the things that I really like about looking at quilts is that even if I would never make something like this, to me, the, and I know I'm getting a little bit like lofty or whatever, but like the heritage of quilt making, it's really, really fundamental, I think, to like human nature and humanity. It's a material culture, right? It shows us who we are as, as human beings, you know? And so when we jump from like a Georgia bone steel cotton ball quilt to a Risa Nagin work, it's like, oh, right the form of quilts is really, it's really amazing. And so I think any kind of style that you work in, hopefully watching any kind of program or any talking, listening to any lecturer or anybody who's talking about, you know, the, the importance of quilts as a, as an art form. I hope that, you know, that, 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 if, that, that you feel that too, you know, that it's like, you don't have to like everything and you don't have to want to make everything that you see, but this is special stuff, you know? Okay, so here's, oh yeah, so here's, so you, I read you the materials and the, and the techniques. So dwell, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Um, this, oh, actually, actually, no, actually, no. I have, that is, that is true. The techniques are, are right, but I have a little bit more about a different quilt that we're going to see in just a second. Okay, so we looked at that one. This is one of the ones in the Smithsonian. 
much darker, right? Much darker. This one is called, yeah, this is called Dwelling. Okay, this is the one. It was made in 1989. It's 76 by 96. Um, this is what Risa says, quote, Dwelling is one in a series of quilts made during the 1990s, which represent a shift from landscape-based pattern into symbolic forms, suggesting psychological states of mind. It was important to exploit the qualities of the quilt as an object, which is associated with comfort and domesticity, to contrast with the disturbing nature of the images. I wanted the work to suggest the seductive quality of beauty, drawing the viewer into the dark content of these works. Look at that with the hand, you know? That's kind of spooky, right? It's kind of like, what's going on here, you know? Oh, and look, look, there's like um, some sort of a metallic. Oh yeah, look, 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 that's, you know, that's creepy. That's a creepy thing, or, but, but, but she doesn't mean to be creepy. She says, the comfort and domesticity of the quilt as a form she wanted to contrast with the disturbing nature of these images. So she's like, yeah, you know, a quilt is really, com it's, it's this symbol of comfort and domesticity, but, but that's not all life is, you know? And so she's making these works. And this is owned by the Smithsonian. Okay, and then there's another one that the Smithsonian has. And while we look at this, I'm gonna read you the bio. Oh, wow. Kenny, reminds me of Guernica. I knew, I knew there was something it reminded me of. Exactly, you know what? Guernica is a Picasso painting. Many of you will know, but Kenny, you get the sound, the sound bite. That's what I do. I invented post-its. Yeah. Kenny may have actually invented post-its. Okay, so Risa Nagin, this is from the Smithsonian, quote, Risa Nagin's rectang rectangular fabric constructions are often called art quilts. They put that in quotes, art quilts, but they are not restricted to developments within the field of textiles alone. Instead, the applique works are natural outgrowths from her prior training and ongoing interest in painting. <laughs> well, okay. <clears throat> um, the artist actually describes herself as, quote, a painter who puts things together in a particular way, unquote but by choosing silks, velvets, acetates, chiffons, cottons, chiffons. That should be my drag name, chiffons. Oh my God, oh my God. I've never thought of it before in my life. Okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty good. Cottons and other dyed cloths <clears throat> and incorporating metallic glitter and cellophane. Wow, that's so moody, right? Isn't it moody? Nagin is able to achieve visual effects beyond the scope of of oil and acrylic paints. They're saying, no, you know, the quilt form is, it, it affords these other luxuries that paint doesn't have. In her multi-textile layered compositions, she can actually create rather than illusorily suggest the transparency and luminescence that painters seek with glazes. That's amazing. That's so true. It's so true. Painters are like, look, this is clear. And Risa is like, I'm going to put clear cellophane on it. <laughs> What are, you know, what are you doing, Picasso? In 1970, why am I I'm really fired up tonight? In 1977, Risa Nagin first began to superimpose layers of translucent fabrics to construct zones of luminous color. Now, as I'm reading the rest of this, I'm gonna go through some other works of hers, okay? Oh, this is interesting. Look, these kimonos, man, they show up all the time. So these are not, can so I, those, can I just yes, interject of course, here, always, yes. I had this painting teacher when I was in school when I was in college, who frequently mentioned how anything that was quote unquote, I'm using the finger quotes, crafty was not real art. I would like to grab his head and rub his face in her quilts. I'm telling <laughs> you. Very painterly. You know what? Exactly. And that, that, that we talk about all, all the time, right? Cake It's like the art versus craft divide. And I mean, I do a whole lecture on it. It's, it's really, it's, it's really it's really a lot of trouble and it started back a long time when people decided that that there was high art and low art and and it's it's just crap you guys it's crap this is a modern convention it started when well it's a whole thing but I agree that like are you kidding look at Risa Nagin's work and you tell me if the painters have something up on the quilt maker I mean come on like it's it, and this this is brilliant stuff rather than trying to 
to, to you know, fake or to, to portray translucence in a painting, like, why don't you go with chiffon? <laughs> it works great, you know? Go with, some, go with some acetate, you know? So, okay. So in 1977, Risa Nagin first began to superimpose layers of translucent fabrics to con construct zones of luminous color. This is not a 1977. Now, I'm just showing you pictures of her work, okay? So I'm reading this and showing you her work, not necessarily in chronological order. Subtleties in hues, in hue, were further enhanced by washes of acrylic color brushed onto commercially dyed textiles. She also left areas in her compositions unlined to allow light to penetrate sheer fabrics. I love this work. Training in paper making, boom, also broadened her experience in materials and methods of construction. And in the early 1980s, she began to employ stitching not simply as a technique, but as a strong graphic element in her designs. Now, I would, I would guess that this is stitching, right? That's stitching, it's gotta be. And by the way, this is 1993. Much of her work from the early 70s and early 80s, early, wait, sorry, sorry. Much of her work from the 70s and early 80s was made to be worn. Bam, I think. Because, it, because its shape did not disrupt the flow of her designs, the kimono was a favored format. Can I just say, listen, listen. I don't know what my lipstick is doing, but I have to pause this program, okay? And I have to tell you. Somewhere, someone out there right now, or watching later, maybe years later, someone is like, I want to do a work of quilt scholarship. I want to contribute to this field. I want to give new life and new blood into the quilt scholarship world. But whatever shall I write a paper on? Whatever shall, whatever shall I do research on? You don't even have to write a paper. Whatever shall I spend a year looking at and digging deep into? I would suggest looking at the proliferation and even obsession with kimonos and art in the art quilt world in the 1980s. Could you, I'm fascinated by it. It's not that it's like problematic. I mean, I don't know, but so many people, so many people. If you wanna know where to start, watch the show, talk to me, talk to anybody who's watched this show. From the beginning, I mean, Yvonne Porcella. Lisa Nagin, I was now just I did. gonna say Yvonne Porcella. Yvonne, man. I mean, Yvonne sort of led the charge, but there's so many, and we've seen them. What is the deal? And, and, and you know, when we're talking about people, you know, the cultural, you know, we can talk about appropriation, we can, in terms of culture, we can talk about, you know, um, you know, sort of problematic, you know, stealing, and, you know, that, that, that's not what I see here. I see inspiration. I don't know, but I don't know. So it's not like, like you know, figure it out, you know, get to the heart of the controversy. That's not what it's about. Does anyone know? That's why we do research. That's why we ask, what's that all about? There's nothing wrong with asking what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? I just don't, I, I, I'm not trying to play gotcha here. Like, why were they all making kimonos? I want to know why. It's so interesting. And they were beautiful. But like, it was like an American, like Western white lady thing, okay? It just was, it just was. <laughs> as far as I know, but maybe I'm wrong. Anyway. I think I've made my but point. You know, Mary, I've actually never thought about it that way when she says that it, it makes a nice canvas, you know? Because you think about it, there if you, you want to make something to wear, you know, t tailoring clothing, I mean, depending on your body size could be like, you get like tiny things. It's brilliant. You're, you know? you're right. You know, so if, if, but even a small person could wear like a kimono type of structured sort of garment, right? Right. And you have this, what you have this space. And if you're doing patchwork or painting on fabric, like obviously, like that's mm -hmm. awesome. It's a, it's a, that's yeah. a brilliant hypothesis, right? Right. Well, and Avon Portello, I think, is a, per and not all of her stuff was kimono. I mean, some no, no, sort of no, boxy no. jackets yeah. sort of things, yeah. but it makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. she was doing those big bold things. So yeah. And and oh, Lady K's in DC. Oh, you know what, Lady K? Lady K. You're just in time because I need to, I need to be, pay a visit to the National uh, Museum of the, the Women, the Women's Museum, uh, w w uh, National Museum of Women in the Arts, because they have the, they have the, um, all of the records for the Artist in the Quilt project, and I want to, I want to look at the Artist in the Quilt, so they've got all of the, anyway, so maybe if I come to DC, Lady K, it's happened before, it happens all the time, that when nerds are in the same town, we get together. 
So, I mean, just keep coming around, you know? Seriously, seri Lady K, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't go anywhere, you know? Tune in, and then I would love to meet up with nerds. Anyway, so, um, but the other thing too, cake is that, cake, cake, is that in the, in, in the 1980s, and if my friend Jonathan's watching, I mean, the Japanese quilt culture as we know it was born in the 1980s. And so it is without question that you had this like meeting of the minds. I mean, you had shows happening in Japan all of because of the Whitney exhibit. I mean, part in, due in huge part to the Whitney Museum of Art exhibit, abstract art in American, abstract art, I always mess it up. Abstract Design in American Quilts. That show toured to Japan, the Whitney show. And then it was, it's a huge thing now. So, so there's that too. Anyway, I just want everyone to know we're going right back to the stuff, but it's, it's so cool. You know, all the, all the things that are left to learn, right? And we want you to, we want you to do it. Okay. I've got a few more pictures of, of Reese's work and I have to show you, okay? Oh, look at this is 1992, it's called Three Sisters. That translucence, you can really see it. Okay. Um, in 1984, the direction of Nag Nagin's art underwent a fundamental change. From ideas derived from sensory experience, the artist now turned to imagery, originating in her unconscious mind. Wow. With this dramatic shift in character of her content, Nagin firmly adopted a rectangular, here we go, look, picture, like format for her applique compositions, employing a personal iconography comprised of archetypal images drawn from many cultures, flat pattern hands, we've seen them, house forms, there's one right there, um, skulls, snakes, and globular and cellular shapes. She created elusive pictorial tales that communicate the anxiety of disturbed dreams. Oh God, look at that figure down there under the chat, yikes. Illustrated Passage, which is one of the ones we saw here. Illustrated Passage is this one, okay? We looked at that earlier. I'm just going to pull it up because the Smithsonian is talking about it. <clears throat> Made in 1988. Is one of a series of ambiguous compositions created in the late 1980s that pictorially represent symbolic power struggles, both personal and universal in significance. Employing a limited number of repetitive images, these works portray perturbed states of mind, Summarizing her creative approach, Risa Nagin writes, quote, my intention is to create beautiful, complex surfaces which evoke some of the human experience. Perhaps it is something as simple as the quality of light or, in recent work, the use of symbolic narrative suggesting the intensity of inner realities. Yeah, that's it. That's what I got for you, and this is called Union, <clears throat> and this is her newest work <clears throat> that, that I have represented here, 2001. Now, um, so so there, so there, this, I mean, yeah, translucence. I mean, this, look, you know what? We talk about quilts and fashion, right? But we don't talk about, like, these materials. Chiffon, obviously, being, you know, a, a fabric used in the loveliest, right, fanciest, most expensive dresses. I mean, this looks like... Like, I feel like Project Runway, Tim Gunn would probably love to know about this because he'd be like, designers, make it work. We're going to look at, at the work of Risa Nagin. We're gonna look at the work of art quilters, you know? That'd be amazing. I met Tim Gunn, you know. I have, yeah, anyway. A person who can make chiffon work on a quilt is my hero. Look at that. Chiffon is not fun to sew. <laughs> Chiff chiffon, not Mary fun. Mary Fons is a fun friend, That's but right. chiffons is not cool. Mary Chiffon. Vuns is fun. Exactly. I mean, this is, it's really, and she's hand dyeing all that. So, so the last image I have for you tonight is a picture of that work she was working on. I found it. I found it in Heliotrope. Remember, she was doing the installation. I work for you. I work for you. I work so hard for you. That's why, if you like this show and you had fun tonight, you should totally become a subscriber. It really helps. Um, because I want to do this forever, you know? Um, so this is Heliotaxis, and this is what she was working on. I'm gonna hide the chat just for a second because I want you to see the whole thing. Um, and that's the other thing about, you know, being a subscriber is you can read the chat in, in, on Twitch. You don't have to do it on the replay. Um, cool Tops by Ivana, have I given you enough love at this moment? I mean, at this, at the, <laughs> we got another bingo. Um, 
you're amazing. Okay, so Heliotaxis is what she was working on, um, and it's 138 by 420 inches. So here we are in the space, you know, here we are in the space. And so she's, she's got what seems to me to be these sheets, right? These, um, you know, you can kind of tell there's something in the foreground here, you know, okay. And then there's something in the background, you know, these are the pipes in, in, the, in the space. Um, this is a wonderful photograph. So, so silk, polyester, oh yeah, and this is in this book, you guys. And indeed, we do have a uh, affiliate link for the Sakwa Masters Art Quilts Volume Two. This is this is a great great book. You know who's next to uh, Risa Nagin in this book? Taffy Brown. Taffy Brown. Um, silk, polyester, gouache, cotton, acrylic paint, thread, bonding agents, stain, and it is stained appliqued embroidered, layered, bonded, and it is hand sewn. Good job, Larry Ripple, because you took a great photograph of this work. So, you know, we, we, we said and, uh, Alexander Calder, uh, Kenny mentioned Picasso, all, all of that, right? All of that. Even Miro, little Juan Miro, maybe? You know, it's very, it's cool. This is cool. And, and Tim Gunn would love this too. I met him. Did I ever tell that story on this show? <sighs> okay. This is the backdrop to my story about meeting Tim Gunn. I was in New York. And I was at, oh, this is so bougie. I like, hate it. I hate it. I don't like, I want to get through this part of it. I was at the Met Museum in the members lounge. <laughs> Sorry. It's gross, but it's true. I was anyway. So it was at the members lounge at the Met, and um, I was sitting there with my Russian Bitcoin mining boyfriend. Anyway, um, and so that's another story. That's the quilt nerd after dark story. Anyway, I was the member of the museum, not him. Anyway, so we were sitting there and we were working on our computers, doing something, just basically because our apartment was horrible, horrible and small, and we had to go somewhere. And my family was a member at the Met. Anyway, so we were there, and I look over. I'm like, <gasps> I was like Yuri, that's Tim Gunn. Hang on, let me let me do this. I mean, this is. This And Yuri's like, who's that? I'm like, oh, this is why we're going to break up. Anyway, so, so, and he was, Tim Gunn was sitting there and he was like, he was exactly the way you wanted him to be from start to finish. This is a good story. He's sitting there like perched, perched on the settee in the member's lounge of the Met. And he's looking at a book. He's, I mean, you know, those coffee table books they put on like members lounge tables and no he didn't lick his finger like I'm doing now but he was like in, a, in perfectly coiffed in a suit and he was leafing through a book you know at the Met right in the members lounge he may have had an espresso but he was just like and I had just published my book oh my god that's so weird no it's so weird it's so weird really that's weird because I it had just come out okay so it was 2014 and I had these postcards these promotional postcards and I, when I've met famous people, it's only been a few times, but I, I, I hate, I just don't want to be like, oh, I blah, blah, blah. like, you know, I just, ugh. so the only thing that I've ever done successfully is to tell them like, thank you so much for what you do, because it's really given me a lot of pleasure or it's really taught me a lot. And so I wasn't going to, I mean, he was right there. It was Tim Gunn. And I was like, well, I'm going to give him a promotional postcard for my book. But I'm just, just gonna say on the back, I'm gonna say thank you so much because I'm a textile person and you really have done so much, you know, for people who love to sew and everything. And so I wrote it and I was like, <laughs> you know, I mean, just wanted to be like, and when he got up, he got up to leave because I wasn't gonna bother him and then what, like sit down and be weird, you know, I wasn't gonna be like, hi Tim, I'm sitting right over there, like, mm, you're great. And so he, he got up and he was like, you know, it gets, it gets it's, so, it's so good. And I, and I stood up and I was like, <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. 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 Gunn. And he's like, call me Tim. It's so great. He was like, call me Tim. And I was like, well, Tim, um, I I just I, I you know, and I told him, I was like, I really appreciate what you do. I make quilts, you know, I just wrote this book, and I like 
gave him his postcard. He's like, well, good for you. And he meant it. He was like, well, that's tremendous. Tremendous. Good for you. Well, you, you know, I forget, you know, you're going to be just fine or something like that. Or, you know, you're, you are going places, young lady, or something. You know, it was just great. But call me Tim. That's what he did. And it was just, it was the best exchange. He was so cool. So, you know, sometimes you hear like, oh, that celebrity, like, they are the worst. You know, Tim Gunn was like a class act. He was so awesome. Why did I? Oh, yeah. He would really like this work by, by Reese Nagin, right? He would like this. It ought to be, it ought to be on Project Runway. That's what I say. Let's take one more look at it before we sign off tonight. Boy, this show's been fun. I had so much fun. I love it that we're uh, we're getting out to the folks on Facebook and YouTube. You know, it's like just cool to have more people at the party. And um, as we've said tonight, you know, um, the membership and the like giveaway and all that stuff's on Twitch. Don't be afraid of it. Um, it's it's a platform built for live streaming. It's really good at live streaming. One thing that we've found with the YouTubes, there's a big delay over there, man. And I've heard people say that Twitch, you know it's it's they they know what they're doing with that so so it's really cool and if you uh, want to be over here you will be happy that you, you that you did come over so so that's what cult nerd is like and yeah it's about you know it's an hour 15 minutes i mean two hours 15 minutes we just hang out and talk about stuff um i love lady k i'm so yeah lady k's like tim would love this um artisan ed loves chiffon now i'm catching up on the chat i i was i wasn't too good at looking at the chat tonight i apologize about that but there was so much to say we looked at georgia bone steel we looked at Reese uh lisa nagan we looked at uh, a feed sack quilt you know from from costa benberry's book it's all just really fun, and uh, and it's just a Tuesday night. So on Saturday, there will be a special guest, I believe, that my older sibling, Hannah Fonz, will be joining us. We're gonna work on that. She's down to be on the show. We're gonna figure out how to get her in here. And um, yeah, I mean, it's different every time, and it's live, and we love it when you join us. Stephanie Cake, couldn't do it without you. Congratulations, Auntie Sin, for winning the books. Cake, thank you so much. You're the best. You're the best, Mary. You're the None best. None of us would be here if, we, if not for you. Hey, man. I, I'm just here to steer the ship. Oh, okay, I'll see you later. And I, the past couple nights, I've like, hey, Sonia D, thank you so much for subscribing. Sonia, thank you so much for subscribing. You've subscribed for eight months at tier one. I so appreciate it. The Amazon Prime membership, it is awesome. It is free, but I'll, I gotta tell you, Jeff Bezos gets most of that <laughs> that free membership is great it's great if you subscribe at tier one it's a little bit better for the show just in terms of like you know how it supports the show so um i really appreciate that but i also appreciate anybody who subscribes at any level it is amazing it helps us do this and we got so much stuff we want to do so subscribe today and that is awesome and i won't do what i've did the, done the past couple shows where i just accidentally cut the show off by hitting the wrong button so instead I am going to do this. I will see you all on Saturday, 8 p.m. Central. Oh, no, no, Friday morning. Friday at 9 a.m. Friday morning. Every other week we do a morning show at 9 a.m. Central, right here. It'll be multi-streaming. Friday is the 1st of September. So Friday, September 1st, 2022, 9 a.m. Central. Get your Friday, coffee. September 2nd. September 2nd, you know, September 2nd. I'll have coffee and I will know the date. So we'll see you Friday and Saturday actually this week. Okay, bye everybody. Bye, thank you.